In Japan, cars are just built different. No, no, the cute little boxy cars that dominate Japanese roads. When you have 120 million people living in an island country the size of California, cars just don't work. But 200 mile an hour bullet trains do. This has led to strict car regulations, helping to create an interesting category of vehicles known as k j i d o s h a or the K car. With the K car strict size and power limitations, automakers did make fun cars like the Suzuki Cappuccino, but the most space efficient style is a box. And Japan has so many narrow streets that even larger vehicle classes favor the practical boxy shape, and one such car was the Toyota BB. Spoiler alert, this car was sold in America as the Scion XB, but back then, there was simply no need for such a car in the US. They don't have size and power limits. Americans wanted bigger, more powerful cars. Plus, if roads got overcrowded, we have the space to make them wider, even wider, and really wide. But Toyota had a big problem. They could not convince young people to buy their cars, making them at risk of becoming a brand for old people. Toyota needed something to attract the youth. They tried the MR2 Spider, but it was too expensive and impractical. They tried the Celica, which got some traction, but it was still an impractical two door coupe that costed more than a Corolla, which young buyers already couldn't afford. So, if price was an issue, Toyota tried the $9,995 Toyota Echo, but it was ugly, came with no air conditioning or power steering for that price, and to make matters worse for Toyota, it became a popular car for the elderly. Toyota had a serious problem, and they needed something ambitious. The Scion brand, which was coincidentally led by Jim Farley, you know, the guy that would call this a Mustang. And the Scion brand would do just about everything differently. For starters, Toyota witnessed General Motors pour billions into Saturn. Not the planet, the car brand, which you probably never heard of because it turns out people didn't really want cars made of Tupperware. GM spent big money on the brand though. Building a new factory with all new models, all while establishing a dealer network. Now, thanks to Lexus, this wasn't really a foreign task for Toyota, but the goal was to sell affordable cars to essentially young and broke customers. So, instead of new factories, Toyota would use existing assembly lines. And instead of new models, Toyota rebranded existing ones sold outside of America as Scions. And finally, instead of establishing a new dealer network, Scions would be sold at existing Toyota dealerships. There was no haggling, and to make things even simpler for the buyer, there was just one trim level that came with either an automatic or manual transmission. However, there were tons of accessories that dealers could install to make each customer's car unique. This was really important because Scion launched with just two cars based on the same platform the XA and the XB. Based on the Toyota IST, they were practically twins. They had the same engine, the same power, the same transmission, and so on. But being smaller and lighter, the XA was more nimble and accelerated quicker. So when it came to sales, Toyota thought the XA would be twice as popular. Except the exact opposite happened as the XB outsold the XA 2 to 1. While in Japan, the XB might just be another boring, boxy car on the streets, in the US there was simply nothing like it. It was the perfect car for a young buyer looking to stand out, but it turns out that its unique looks weren't the only thing that made it special. It was affordable, practical, and very well equipped for the price. Unlike the Echo that added thousands for basic features like air conditioning and power steering, the XB came standard with all of that. In fact, every Scion came with power windows, power locks, keyless entry, and a multi disc CD player. Back then, this was a big deal as most economy cars, including the Corolla, didn't come standard with many of these features. These cars gave buyers serious value. From a practicality standpoint, the XB was incredibly spacious inside, and those massive windows gave drivers excellent visibility. It was truly a perfect car for a young buyer, and of course, Toyota wasn't taking any notes. When the XB was introduced to America in 2003, it had already been on sale in Japan for a few years, so by 2006, Toyota of Japan was ready to move on to the second generation of the black box. 
The new model came with a more rounded design but carried over the same practicality, dimensions, and performance specs. But wait a minute, that's not the second gen XB. This is the model we got here in the US. You see, the XB's growing sales numbers were proving that it was more than just an experimental niche car. Perhaps now the Americans needed something less polarizing. They needed something bigger and more powerful. In other words, an XB tailored for the US market and not the Japanese market with their tiny roads and parking spaces. Or at least that's what Toyota must have been thinking because the second gen XB was actually a Corolla. The Corolla Rumion, which was a successor to the Corolla Spatio, a car that wasn't sold in the US. Even though this new Corolla came with an already bigger 1.8 liter engine, the new XB would get a large 2.4 liter Camry engine, providing a 50% boost in power over the first gen model. Sounds great, but this, along with an extra 600 pounds that it gained, meant that fuel economy plunged. It felt like a gas guzzler compared to the first model, and this decision also came at a time when gas prices were soaring, doubling from 2005 to 2008. Plus, all of these extras led to a massive $1,600 price bump, which is a more than 10% increase in just one year. You know, right before the Great Recession. Sales of the XB immediately dropped, and when the recession hit, they fell to 25,000 and got worse and worse as the years passed. This was understandable because the new XB took away everything the original stood for. Toyota forgot who the Scion brand was for, young buyers who needed something affordable and unique. The new model was a more neutral and less risky design. It was larger, heavier, less economical to run, and less practical. Toyota never got the message, or maybe they didn't care because the second gen XB continued to be sold all the way until Scion shut its doors in 2016. Unfortunately for Scion, Kia was paying attention and introduced the Kia Soul. It was unique, affordable, practical, and marketed towards the youth. And this meant it went on to be more successful than the XB ever was because it stayed true to its roots as a economical, weird choice for young buyers. In Toyota's defense though, designing a unique niche car isn't a part of their culture. This is the brand of the Corolla and Camry after all. Toyota sells more basic cars than any other brand, and their goal has always been to appeal to the masses, with of course a sports car here and there. But it makes you wonder, with the rise of the crossover and the success of the Kia Soul, perhaps Scion would still be around if the XB stayed true to its roots. Or perhaps that's what the new Corolla Cross is. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.